The World Artificial Intelligence Conference is underway in Shanghai. Industry leaders, scholars, and government officials are on hand to discuss new technologies, their application, and governance. China's vast population generates a large amount of data, and it's been widely perceived to be at a unique advantage. But according to industry insiders, it doesn't stop there. Indeed, you know, Chinese consumers you know, generate a huge amount of data. If you look at the consumer internet, now you know, we have you know, absolutely the biggest consumer internet market you know, around the world. And uh, even those you know, mobile you know, internet applications, I would say China is you know, in many ways leading, uh, whether this is communication tools you know, or it's actually e-commerce. So that's actually true. But I would also point out that you know, as we talk about the data, it's not only just the data you know, generated by humans. It's also a huge amount of data, more and more huge amount of data really generated by devices. So I think that is where we will see an even more increase, you know, whether it's actually in you know, the machines, in you know, the, the, the engines, you know, all those things are the big and the small. So what does the future hold for advances in AI technology? Gregory Vandenberg is CEO of Bankerus. It's an AI-powered company that converts real-world assets into cryptocurrency. Want to join? Uh, he's joining our broadcast from Singapore. Thanks so much for being with us. This is really kind of a showcase for China to show where they are when it comes to AI, isn't it? That is correct. I mean, China has been an AI leader uh, for many years now. It now has more more patents in the machine learning side, but also on like what the gentleman before me said on Internet of Things and data collection. China really has a leg up because the average Chinese user produces about four to seven times data, uh, more data than uh, somebody in the Western world. Uh, and that, that, that fills itself in the research that can be done in China on that particular data. But also besides data, what is important is the actual computer power. And with cloud giants like Alibaba Cloud, Tencent Cloud, et cetera, China is creating more and more computer cloud, uh, computer power, and also most of the uh, supercomputers now that, that Tianhe is now based in China. And this gives China a leg up in the AI race. Well, it's not just uh, China, though. There, uh, all the players are at this event. Uh, even with the trade dispute between the United States and China, Google's there showing off AI tools aimed at a Chinese audience. Amazon and Microsoft announcing plans on Monday to build new AI research labs in Shanghai. There's talk at the conference about greater collaboration, uh, kind of breaking down the walls, country versus country, that sort of thing. Talk to me about that. Well, in order for, well, particularly machine learning uh, to work well, uh, one needs the largest data set. And so even though you know, America is a large country, China is a large country, it's really that company that can get, the, besides the right computer power, the largest data set from data from US uh, users, Chinese users, European users, African users, et cetera that has a leg up and so therefore all these companies try to be as global and have to be as global as possible uh, an ai company cannot uh, cannot remain focused solely on the on the local market as is the case with with other uh, other types of verticals in the internet industry so per definition the most global company will be the company with the most data and therefore will be the company with the best models, the best machine learning, and has the leg up towards the con consumer. So being global is a must in this industry, and, and that is really truly showcased uh, in, in this conference where a lot of the global players, such as Google, Amazon, et cetera, uh, are setting up research labs in China as well as other parts of the world primarily for gathering data and also working with the uh, know-how that China uh, has, has, has gathered uh, over the last few years. China now produces more, uh, produces more uh, machine learning scientists, also has more papers published on reinforced machine learning and a variety of other uh, subtopics. So collaboration really is a must. Uh, Gregory, I was uh, reading up on this conference online, and, and one of the headlines jumped out at me about this conference. It said, hype versus reality. Do you think AI is being overhyped? You know, people always overestimate what will happen in one year time, but drastically underestimate what will happen over the next year time. Um, you have seen now with a lot of the, you know, up IPOs that, 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 that came along in the AI space or, or you know, recently last week, there was NEO uh, IPOing in the United States. These valuations are real. 
Um, I'm not sure if we are you know, in a hype. In a country like China, you can see you know, anecdotally on a day-to-day -day basis, AI taking over from uh, many, many humans doing particular parts of the processes. Um, I think now um, most of the focus in technology is on blockchain and a few other things. And AI is less and less uh, of, of a you know, on vogue issue. I, I do not think it's overhyped at all. All right, Gregory, we're going to have to leave it there. Thanks so much for joining us.